Pandora boxes come in many shapes and sizes. The family edition, perfect for a bar top, ready to plug into a HDMI TV. But the last one to work on a CGA monitor was the Gemma DX. Now 3A have finally released the Pandora Box 10th. Is this the best one yet? Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribe off. This is the box we got, and this is what's inside. So the label has a holographic sticker, since something similar with Transformers. And here's the manual. We've seen all these pages before, as it's been released online. But let's check out some of the main features. It's two gigabits of memory, and CGA. Just what the doctor ordered. We're still unsure of what the network's for, nor is it explained in this manual. But we do have 1080p, 720p, the same in 4.3, as well as CGA. Yum, 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 yum. Whee! The shape of the 10th predates the DX, but the size is very similar. A nice handful. Over here we have the Jammer Edge, which can also send video output. On the side we have two USB ports and a settings button. Got a lot of action here. There's a volume rocker, three lights, an audio jack, VGA port, HDMI, and a port for one gigabit network. And some air holes. Some on the back too. We then hooked it up to the Astro City. And after changing the resolution four times, we eventually get a nice image. Boot up takes around 45 seconds. Then we're introduced to the games menu. There's a very long list of around 5,000 of them, but to navigate, we need to insert a coin or change to free coin mode in the option screen. Let's have a look at that. So we've got the Wi-Fi config. In button config, we got IO test, which we can use to test the controls on the Jamma harness. But the first large improvement of this box is we have custom mapping. We only have four separate button maps, but we can use them for any game we wish. So we can have one for Neo Geo, one for Mortal Kombat, and so on. We also have difficulty and live settings. And for King of Fighters, we can confirm that this works. There's a favorites list, which bumps up the games to the top. And with edit games list, we can hide all the titles we don't want to see. Another nice addition is we can do this by emulator, so we can hide everything but arcade games from our list. But doing this in CGA mode also hides Tekken 5 and 6. Let's first try Mortal Kombat 1. And it's the Mega Drive version. I'm just going to hold start, get the menu up. And from here we can get back to the games list. Let's try another one. And it's the Super Nintendo one. All right, third time's a jump. And yeah, this is running great. But like older boxes, the Midway games are very quiet. But what we can do is sort out these buttons. Open up the in-game menu. Go to console config. Map out the buttons. Save settings. And we're good to go. Wow. Wow. I'm very impressed that it worked. Here's Mortal Kombat 3. And for this, we can do the same thing. Street Fighter 3, third strike. King of Fighters, 98. Metal Slug X. If we've got a Thomas Wave on this machine, why is this not the real thing? I don't know. Here's some 2 on 2 for Jay. And Outrun. I prefer to have one button set as gear, but in this case, both high and low gear are separated. Coming back to the games list now, we have some filters. Here's the Frist Alphabet Order, which lumps all game titles that start with the letter you wish, all together, in no order. We can filter by category and system, but when hooked up to CGA, there are no entries for PSP, Dreamcast, Atomis Wave, N64, or any light gun games. But using the search function, we can find them and get a few of these running. Is Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for the Dreamcast. Or Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for Naomi. For Tekken 2 on the PlayStation, we had to flip a few buttons around. But for Tekken Dark Resurrection on the PSP, 
the buttons were already bound. It runs pretty well, and as suspected, the screen was stretched vertically. It doesn't look too bad, but it can be fixed with the V-size pot on the monitor. And much like the Pandora Games 3D, we can play two-player Tekken 6 on the PSP. But as it's using a very old version of Puzzle we can see Leg Jiggle. But the question we all wanted to hear, does it run Killer Instinct? Well surprisingly, yes, if you want the SNES version. The buttons are all good too. But how about KI Gold for the N64? And surprisingly enough, yes, this runs good too. Button binds and everything. If you wanted the arcade game, sorry, not here. But how about Streets of Rage for the Mega Drive? I know the Mega Drive is quite easy to emulate, but the older DX had a lot of screen tearing and judder when playing Sonic. The judder is still present, but it might be because they're using an older version of MAME. It's less obvious here in the Genesis version of Sonic 2. And here's a new system they added, Atari Lynx. I don't know why. We then tried the VGA monitor, and inside the settings we have a light gun option. We plugged in our gun for her, and sorry to say, it just does not work. Looks like we'll need a follow up review whenever they get released. As for the filter menu, yeah, all the systems are here now, as are the newer games in the main game list. We're also given something else in the in game menu the ability to switch aspect ratio. From 16.9 to 4.3, easy peasy. In VGA, the picture looks much more clearer, but still has 3A's patented bilinear blur. In the manual, it mentions 516 vertical games. We expected that we could rotate the screen, but sadly, no luck. We even tested HDMI, but no Tate. But an extra load of games did become visible. The light gun shooters. Please insert light gun. Gun fur. And nothing. Let's open Pandora's box. There's only four screws holding it together. And here's the back of the board. If we give it a wiggle, it just pops straight out. The cable that's attached is the Wi-Fi antenna. The Wi-Fi chip is clearly visible, active cooling, and the first thing we should do is take out this micro SD, back it up. The micro SD inside is a cheaper SAN disk, but it should be reliable enough. On the card there's around 5GB of free space, and this folder called RetroArchNet gives us a clue to what the network was planned for. Other things of interest are these folders here, so we might be able to change arcade settings in the future. Unfortunately, they are empty, so we've got no clues to go off. Same thing goes for adding games. Nothing's written in the manual, and the last video 3A uploaded to YouTube was two years ago. We tried adding games to this ROMs user folder, but no new additions were made to the main games list. I think it's time to get to the pros and the cons. With aspect ratio, CGA, a decent enough chip, button mapping, and new arcade systems emulated, 3A have done a good job in creating a Pandora box that is decent at stock. But they really need to get rid of this blur, and understand that people want to fiddle with their box either with changing dip switches or adding games. There are still other options that can outclass this when it comes to having nice sharp pixels, but at stock, this is the best Pandora box on the market. As we finish with the game of Capcom vs SNK2, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Thank you. We make video reviews, guides, and also fix these cheap arcade boxes with Pandora. If you want to support us, please jump on, or a like, subscribe, and bell. This has been Ibi Chicken of Team Pandori, I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!